And this is where they're the most deadly, with Babcock, Sadok, Engler at the end zone. Oh, that's a nice dish. Sadok picks up the assist, and Henry Babcock scores the first goal in a Boston Glory home game. This handler trio is going to be tough to guard the entire game for Atlanta. T3 Nationals holds a place in your heart, doesn't it? That's right. Matt Smith looking for the call. He doesn't get one. And Boston has a chance for the break. It was picked off by Brendan McCann. This is going to be a point of emphasis here for Atlanta, already off to a rocky start. Their offense towards the end of the game against Raleigh, they had a sizable lead, and they almost coughed it up. It's going to be important for them to be able to score easily and efficiently. Ivan Tran takes the reset. Austin Taylor unable to set the mark, and another break into the end zone. Boston up 2-0. Team really well. It's just super coordinated and forces a lot of throws. It's a gorgeous hammer over the top. Boston historically has had that patience, though, to work through this sort of thing. That one floating up there, but finds Engler, and he'll dish for the goal hauled in by Turner. And there's so few of them out there. There's value in all those ancient AUDL tops. We got a few of them at home. Looking for Taylor. Got him. Tell you what, Peyton Austin Nab has been impressive. This is a great throw. This, this probably exceeds expectations. As cloudy as they were. Up the line, dangerous throw, but no one from Atlanta really read it. And Boston converts. Babcock picks up another assist, this time to Sadok. Fairly, Davis among them. Matt Smith has hops too, but they're down to eight seconds now. Here's Taylor. Winds up and launches. Jaime in the area, and he'll make the catch. Eli Jaime at the buzzer. Scores the equalizer for Atlanta. They would be huge. Pulling out of bounds, but clock keeps rolling. Da Antoine Davis going deep, and he's denied. Great defense downfield from Chris Bartoli. Chris Bartoli is a giant killer. Back to Sadok. Oh, what a bid. It was Christian Gaeta that got a piece of it. Now Gaeta takes off, and the throw goes up, and Jakeem Polk is going deep. There's a Boston player there, too, but that doesn't matter, because when Jakeem Polk's nearby, you better look out. Eight all. What a play. We knew it was a matter of time before we started to see the fireworks with Jakeem Polk. And the, the trust is here. This is how fast Atlanta is able to transition from D to O. When you have the athletes, you get the block, and right away, I, there's no question here where this, this is going. Fun to watch these athletes pick up the sport so quickly. And one of the things that, you know, we'll talk about many times, I'm oh, sure, is that, that Miranda Roth Knowles loves that the fact that he's been coached his entire life. Yep. Being coachable, being able to transition so fast from another sport, that's crucial. Blade finding Sadok. He's a step shy of the goal line. And a little high release, cheeky lefty flick. Pool. Based on the results of the second half, for your share of $1,000 in cash. That's going to close soon. Just over three minutes remaining in the half as Taylor launches deep. That disc is going to find Parker Bray. Bray with a rising stall count going cross field, and Jaime is all alone. Ten all. That's three goals. Make it four goals now for Jaime in this first half. Oh, and another block. It's Kelvin Williams getting a piece of it. Lulling the Boston offense to sleep. I feel like he set that up four possessions ago. Dylan Tunnell has another AUDL assist. And the Hustle had the lead for the first time here in Boston. 
Austin Taylor downfield this point, and a nice little blade to get it there. And then the shot to Jaime. He'll turn on the Jets and score his fifth goal of the half. Jaime is a problem right now. Yes, he is. <laughs> for Boston, he's all over the place. He's just a target from that 60-yard distance. Evan Leppler, Brian Jones, our entire crew here with you from Boston. The deep shot finding Ben Sadok. That was pretty. And Sadok showing he could be a deep target, too. We saw that he had over 700 yards of total offense last week. Tina Booth with the Nutsy Camps has had played such a big role in the development of the state and, and of the Northeast region and of the nation. No question about it. Davis is going. Taylor launches it. Davis has steps. And he's got the goal. Target is while Boston, a little dicey through the middle. Yep, floated up there, but hung on to by Nick Thompson. Deep shot hanging in the air. Holzmeyer lurking, but he can't outleap Orion Cable. 20 year old budding star from Amherst. He does one of these a couple times a week. A description used to describe many a versatile ultimate player. He really is. He can kind of do it all. Here's the hammer. Sadok floats it up there, and Cable with another. D-line out there primarily, and Sadok's just going to steer this ship down to McCann, who rips another one deep. Intended for Halflin, but Davis rises up for Atlanta. That's a critical block. If Atlanta comes back to win this game, let's remember that play with just under five to go in the third. Bray back in the game. It's great to see him after that. He took the injury sub. Davis, one on two. Doesn't matter. Antoine Davis with Atlanta's first goal since there were nine minutes and 25 seconds left in the quarter. And here they're kind of running a dominator to let those handlers work it through. And that is going to work. Layout grab from Cable, he can do it in the air. He can also go full extension, leave his feet. We've, wow. see, we've seen him box people out. We've seen him sky people in this game. And now adding this layout. And Here's Fairley. Had a couple big hucks early in the game to help stabilize the hustle offense and Bray's back out there and unleashes a dime to Elijah Jaime. Another one on the board. Cable's going deep. Throw doesn't go up to the deep man. Instead it's Sudoku. Now he'll fire deep. Testing Tanel and the big fella gets the block. Babcock squeezes it through up the line. Davis Brand back across field is blocked. Daniel Sperling comes up for the D and then he takes off. JP Burns' shot is a beauty. Dance in the lane for about seven seconds there. Yudkovich had nowhere else to go. Parker Bray launching and fairly goes up over the defender, bobbles it, hangs on, and he's shaken up on the turf. We saw his athletic ability and an ability to read the disc. That's something that Central Florida, they use their athletes well. They know how to win those situations. How about this? Tunnell launching a flick deep, and it works! Tunnell to Holzmeyer for the lead, and Hustle in front by one in the fourth. This confidence is good for them, to believe they can be at the top of this division and going to championship weekend. Boston already has that belief. I have long believed that in sports where there aren't that many games, oh, Williams! Absolutely swats that swing to the turf. Atlanta, a chance to go ahead by two, and they do. Eli Jaime scores his seventh of the night. JP burns the assist, and the hustle are 306 away from a road win in Boston. So long, like a member of the Syracuse zone in college basketball. That wingspan is just, what do you do? Ian Engler is an elite handler. The hustle without Christian Olsen, without John Stubbs, without player Pierce, some other guys like Tyler Kunsa. Miranda Roth Knowles very excited about there without tonight, but the Atlanta hustle 
are 2-0 in the Atlantic Division. They spoil the first ever game in Boston in the AUDL. Hustle take it 21-19 over the glory. What a game.